Hello there, friends. Welcome to Breakfast All Day. Great to have you, Christy and Alonzo here. Up next for us, we are talking about the documentary Lucy and Desi, which is indeed about Lucy and Desi, directed by Amy Poehler. He said, let's go see a ball. And I said, oh, man, that's a hunk of woman. I was madly in love with Desi. I've never felt that way about anyone before. Yeah, so this is premiering today on Prime Video, which is also where you can see Being the Ricardos. But this ah. is the movie that will actually explain to you things that Being the Ricardos either completely gets wrong or just sort of <laughs> papers over or re-dramatizes in some weird way. Uh, so this is Amy Poehler's directorial debut, feature directorial debut anyway. No, it's and not. It's not? Wine Country. Was that her? Yes. Oh, man. Okay, documentary feature, yes. Dave. <laughs> I stand corrected. It's okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, so she clearly had access to an incredible amount of archival material, tape recordings, old photographs. I mean, the first person that you see on camera in this movie is Lucy Arnaz Luckinville. So, obviously, this is made under the auspices of, and I know we've talked a lot about, mm -hmm. you know, these kind of hagiography documentaries where it's clearly the approved version. And I have to say, this one felt to me like she really got good stuff out of the archives and didn't soft pedal the sort of, you know, issues around, you know, their marriage and what made it work and not work. And, um, you know, you basically get the backstory of where Lucy came from, where Desi came from, where they were in their careers when they met, um, how the show came about, uh, and really like what pioneers in the medium both of them were you know the way that i love lucy was set up in terms of like filming the show but doing it in front of a live audience was unheard of at the time and it became kind of the industry standard the way that they got successful enough that they not only began their own sort of independent studio but then subsumed rko where both of them had been under contract years earlier you're like you know but then at the same time you see how taking all of that on took them away from each other and took them away from family responsibilities. And even though the original idea behind them doing this sitcom was to get him off the road and them to like be at home long enough to start a family, they still like filled their life up with so much other stuff that eventually it, it, it drove a wedge between them. Um, I've never been the biggest I Love Lucy fan, but I do yeah. find, yeah, I, you know, I grew up with like, I Love Lucy, Lucy show and here's Lucy reruns and sort of constant rotation. And I, I was never, I don't know, she was never quite my thing, but I do super admire their moxie and their showbiz savvy and the fact that they, they, they really started television in a lot yeah. of ways, you know, like this thing was this very new and very who knows what the hell's going to be and they, they got it early on they understood how it worked, how to make it, you know, how to be successful in it and so, you know, I think their story is really interesting one and I found this nonfiction telling of it far more interesting than than being the Ricardos, and uh, I think that anybody who's interested who you're whether you're a fan of of the show or just a fan of television and, and the history of television, there's a lot here. Yeah, it's incredible. At the end, they they rattle through all the TV shows that came out of Desi Lu Studios. Yeah. And everything from like the Andy Griffith show to Hogan's Heroes and to Star that Trek. Girl. Star yeah, Trek. That's true. Star Trek. Yeah. It's like just... L Lucy apparently famously kind of went to bat for Star Trek mm -hmm. when when NBC wanted to cancel it originally. Like she got why it was important and why it was appealing. And this does speak to something that happens in being in the Ricardos that might on its face seem like, oh, sure, yeah, right, that really happened. But when you see this, like a bunch of different sequences of Lucy, like standing up to the writers and insisting that they all come back and like reblock out a scene that's not working, that like the comedy is not landing. Mm -hmm. Like you see here in this, that she really truly did have that kind of technical vision, artistic vision. I mean, she and Desi yeah, both. Uh, work um, ethic. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's a horrible, sad irony that they created the show so that they could spend more time together, but then they got so successful. They got too good at it that <laughs> they couldn't be together. Like there was no time. And yeah. then that would play into, and they kind of just dip a toe into this, like Desi's wandering yeah. they don't really explore that they are yeah, tasteful that, about that that's but. probably the thing that's most papered over here but what is interesting and i had never really thought about this that both of them got remarried and stayed married to their second spouses 
far longer than they right. were ever married to each other, but still had this kind of like lifelong connection where like Desi would come back and do like producing and directing chores on, on the Lucy show. And then like when he was dying that, you know, she came to see him and like was the last person he talked yeah. to on the phone. And so it's like, it, it's, yeah, it's just a really compelling story, I think. And, and, and Luciana Zuckenville makes for a really great narrator in terms of, I mean, she's not narrator, but when they mm. cut back to her and she talks about, her memories of what their family life was like and and how it affected they were both affected professionally you know uh you know they kind of skim over a lot of the later stuff there's no discussion of mame here which is like a big a big lucy mistake of the 1970s um but yeah i i i i love this kind of stuff and i love getting also when, when you know you're seeing like photos that the public has never seen before right and the spine of this is the series of audio interviews that lucy did for i want to say ladies home journal magazine it was a magazine yeah. interview and so all of that is never before heard stuff of her talking about her childhood and coming to new york and like you know just starting out with nothing and how she yeah. she began her career and then in the in the present day you have interviews with just an incredible array of superstars, you know, yeah. Carol Burnett and Bette Midler are speaking very fondly about how she really took them under her wing and was a, you know, a, a, mentor, a mentor and a friend and how, how she didn't have to do that. Right? right. And that was so generous of her Norman Lear, you know, of course, singing her praises. Yeah. So it's very, very affectionate as we often see with these movies that are about the person who's involved with producing it or their families involved in producing it. Right. We see that over and over again with like, Michelle Obama or you know, <laughs> Lady Gaga, whoever it is. Sure. Um, it's interesting that like, you know, Amy Poehler, I think came around late enough that like she wasn't directly influenced by Lucy, but like if you watched the big Carol Burnett anniversary special they did a year or two ago, Amy Poehler and Tina Fey and Maya Rudolph and like all of these women from SNL were there to kind of like sit down with Carol Burnett and talk about what a huge influence that, you know, her sketch comedy was on them as they were young and watching her on TV. So even if Polar doesn't appear on camera, like you get the impression of like these sort of generations, sure. you know, of, of impact and how like for women in comedy, there is still always this constant battle of like, you know, not being taken seriously or, 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 or worse being told that women aren't funny, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Right. And you see how daring she was with her physical comedy and how impeccable her timing was and how she would, she was a beautiful woman who would make herself ugly for a laugh and like right. happily do that. And you see that through line to people like Amy Poehler and Tina Fey, you know, sure. they, they, they'll do anything. They'll go anywhere for that. Kate, I mean, Kate McKinnon does this all the time. <laughs> Kirsten Wig does it all the time. So yeah. uh, anyway, you see the through line, you see the, the, uh, the influence, but it's, it's very, very affectionate. Yeah. And if you love this era of television, you will enjoy it. So I'm saying 7.2. I said 7.5. And I would go so far as to say, if you have seen Being the Ricardos, you kind of are required to see this movie <laughs> because that film gets a lot wrong. I'm sorry, Aaron Sorkin. It just does. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, Lucy and Desi is now streaming on uh, Amazon Prime Video. Um, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out at Be Fast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And visit our Patreon page at Patreon dot com slash be fast all day television you say yes we are recapping shows like <laughs> the gilded age and pam and tommy and starting today uh the dropout on hulu starring uh, amanda Seyfried, um and lots of other cool stuff that only our subscribers get including videos like this with no commercial interruption so check that out at patreon.com slash be fast all day thank you for watching we will see you guys next time bye